Hello guys, today I am here to give you a summary of the poem What It's Like to be Transgender written by an award-winning South African slam poet Lee Makubi. So before we begin discussing the poem, let's first try to differentiate between the two terms sex and gender. We often use these terms interchangeably. Many of us think that both these terms mean the same thing, but they are very different. Sex is what you are born as, male, female or in some cases intersex. But gender is what you identify yourself to be. It's your internal sense of who you are. For some people, their gender aligns with the sex that is assigned to them at the time of their birth. Such people are called cisgender people. But there are people whose gender expression differs from the sex that's assigned to them at the time of their birth. Such people are called transgender people. Lee Mukabe is an award-winning slam poet and the founder of Vocal Revolutionaries, a volunteer-run literary organization focused on empowering the African youth. This organization teaches the African youth to share their stories through the medium of art and poetry. Mukhyobe focuses on human rights issues, LGBTQ issues and African history. Lee Mukhyobe's poem, What It's Like to be Transgender, is a powerful autobiographical poem about what it feels like to be a transgender in a highly gendered world. We live in a world which discriminates against transgender people. People look down at them, make fun of them, abuses them in media different ways. It's very difficult for transgender people to lead a normal life in this world. As the poem begins, the poet tells us about a prayer that he made to Jesus Christ. The poet goes to the church one day and he kneels down and prays before Jesus Christ. Long after everyone else dispersed from the church, the poet stayed back praying. He dipped both his hands in holy water and drew a cross across his chest and prayed desperately to Jesus Christ to help fix him. He wanted to get fixed by God because he was neither male nor female and the society was not ready to accept him as such. He felt that his body was dropping down like a question mark. He was neither male nor female and he wanted God to somehow help him come out of this difficult situation. He was born his biological sex was that of a female, but he identified more as a male. And people were not ready to accept him as such. Everyone hurt abuses at him. People mocked him. Nobody was able to understand why he was the way he was. So he wanted God. He hoped that God would be able to save him. God would be able to fix him. So he desperately prayed before God. He asked Jesus to fix him. But after a while, he realized that God was not answering his prayers. When Jesus Christ did not answer his prayer, he continued to suffer in silence. He hoped that his silence would help burn his sin the sin of being born a transgender. This was how the society made him feel. The society looked at him as a sinner because he was neither male nor female completely. He was a transgender. He hoped that if he suffered silently for years, it would help ease his pain. And he continued to be silent. He suffered silently. But days went on, years went on, 
his silence, even his silence could not help ease his pain. He was ashamed of who he was. He was made to feel ashamed of who he was by the society, by everyone who was around him. He was made to feel worthless. He was made to feel like a sinner. His mother was the only person who understood his pain. So she tried to help him out. She told him that he was a miracle. She told him that he had the ability to be whatever he wanted to be. He could choose to be whoever he wanted to be. So he decided to be a boy. But it wasn't easy in the society. He had to balance between being an awkward boy and an apologetic girl. It was like playing hide and seek all the time. And when he turned 12, the neighbors started giving him all sorts of advices. They were very uncomfortable with his way of dressing. According to them, his biological sex was that of a female, so he was supposed to dress up like a woman. So they told him that he should stop wearing trousers and stop behaving like a boy. They told him that he should start wearing skirts and that he was born to get married to a man and to bear kids. Lee felt insulted by all this, but he could do nothing. He did not retort, he did not answer back. In fact, he kept his identity hidden for several years. He endured all their insults and he kept his gender identity a secret because he was scared of being judged by the mainstream society. He did not want to get isolated from society. So he had to keep his gender identity hidden for several years. He did not have the courage to come out and openly admit that he was a transgender. It was not just the neighborhood aunties who bullied him. Even the kids in the school his classmates did not spare him. One day, they called him a lesbian. But he knew that he was more boy than girl. He was more Ken than Barbie. Ken and Barbie are American fictional characters and Ken was the boyfriend of Barbie. Lee knew that he was more Ken, he was more boy than girl. Though everyone hurled abuses at him, he decided not to hate his body. He decided not to hate himself. The poet says that if you know that your house is falling apart, you do not run away, you do not evacuate. You make your home comfortable enough so as to live inside it. You make it pretty enough so as to invite guests over. So he decided not to hate himself, though everyone, everyone started bullying him. Next, the poet talks about how his mother always fears that he would share the same fate as that of Mia Hall, Leela Alcorn and Blake Brockington. All of them were transgenders who lost their lives for the sin of being born as transgenders. Let's now take a look at what happened to Leela Alcom, Mia Hall and Blake Brockington. This is Leela Alcom. Leela Alcom was an American transgender girl whose suicide attracted international attention. She was born to a Christian family which was affiliated with the Churches of Christ movement. She had posted a suicide note to her Tumblr blog, writing about societal standards affecting transgender people and expressing the hope that her death would create a dialogue about the discrimination that the transgender people are being subjected to. At the age of 14, she came out as transgender to her parents, who refused to accept her female gender identity. At the age of 16, they sent her to a Christian-based conversion therapy 
with the intention of convincing her to reject her female gender identity and accept her gender as assigned at the time of her birth. When she revealed attraction towards males to her classmates, she was removed from school and her access to social media was revoked by her parents. Alcon committed suicide by walking into traffic on the Interstate 71 Highway. She cited loneliness and alienation as the key reasons to end her life and blamed her parents for causing these feelings in her. This is Blake Brockington. He was an American trans man whose suicide also attracted international attention. He had previously received attention as the first openly transgender high school homecoming king and had been advocating for LGBT youth, the transgender community and against police brutality. Prior to his suicide, he had indicated that he had experienced years of depression and destructive behavior such as self-harming. Two months prior to his death, he posted a suicide note to his Tumblr page saying that even if I got better in my heart, I would never want to continue living in a world like this. Brockington killed himself by walking into traffic just like Leela Alcon did. And this is Mia Hall. Hall was an American transgender woman who was killed after the security opened fire on her vehicle outside the NSA. She was frequently misgendered and typically referred to as May using her legal name. The poet's mother fears that Lee would also have to share a similar fate as that of Leela Akon, Blake Brockington or Mia Hall. She fears that the society will reduce her son into a shameful object worthy of condescension and empathy. She fears that her son's death would not disturb the mainstream society in any way. She fears that her son would get reduced into a mere what is shame conversation at the bus stop. She worries that her son has turned himself into a mausoleum, a walking casket, as nobody accepts his humanity, nobody sees him as a human being, nobody treats him like a human being is treated. Poet goes on to say how the newspapers have turned the plight of the transgenders into a spectacle. Even equality pages that discuss issues related to gender discrimination, gender equality, etc. conveniently neglect talking about the issues faced by transgender people in the society. This, the poet notes, is because the society does not see transgenders as human beings. They are not even seen as human beings. They are not even considered as human beings. The society treats them as ghosts or as perverted souls. People believe that transgenders are tricksters who are going to trap other individuals and be a negative influence on them. So transgenders, the issues faced by transgenders don't even find a mention in equality pages of the newspapers. The poet says that the society does not treat transgenders as humans. They like to simply prey upon the transgenders and once they exploit them completely, they conveniently discard them. The poet says that the body of the transgenders are used for amusement by the mainstream society and once their amusement is over, they will hang back the body of the transgenders into the closet along with other skeletons. The poet now asks the audience whether they can now see how easy it is to force the transgenders to commit suicide. The mainstream society bullies them and torments them so much so that they are left with no option other than to take off their lives. The poet says that it is the same society 
that torments the transgenders and bullies them, that later wonders why these people took off their lives when they finally end their lives, unable to fare the society, unable to face the society's unfair treatment. The poet says that the transgender kids are taught that they are inferior to the other kids and they are taught self-hate before they even begin to love themselves. The poet says that they are bullied so much at the school that these kids are scared that school discussions, the classroom discussions would turn like that of judgment day and that they would be grated in front of the other kids in the school. Hence, the transgender kids refuse to go to school, they are scared of going to school and they finally commit suicide. The poet also says that more than the parents, it's the oncoming traffic that loves the transgender kids now. He says so because many transgender people are walking into the traffic and ending their lives in a similar fashion. So he says that even though the parents don't embrace their kids, the traffic does. The poet says that transgender suicides are on the rise and people will soon get tired of reading these notes. He says that people will no longer care to even read those suicide notes. More and more transgender kids are taking off their lives and the suicide notes will start to feel redundant to the mainstream society very soon, he says. He goes on to say that even though religions across the world teach compassion and brotherhood, transgenders are always singled out and they are discriminated against. He feels that even God does not care for the transgenders. He believes that even God cannot help them, does not help them. He feels that his blood is not the wine that has washed over Jesus' feet. He is no longer able to pray, he says, because prayer gets struck in his throat. He feels that even God doesn't want transgenders, even God doesn't love transgenders. Such is the discrimination that is meted out to the transgenders that he has lost hope in everything. He has lost hope. He does not even care to pray anymore. He ends the poem in a very pessimistic note. He says that he no longer cares, he doesn't know whether God has God has listened to his prayers. He doesn't know whether God has heard his prayers. But he says that he's reached a point. He's tired now. He's exhausted now. He's reached a point where it no longer matters to him. He has learned to accept him the way he is. He also puts forth the possibility that maybe God would have heard his prayers and maybe this is how God wants me to be. Maybe this is how God wants transgenders to be. This is God's decision. Either way, he no longer cares. He no longer cares whether God has heard the prayers or not. He seems resigned. The poet seems resigned to his fate in a very discriminatory, cruel world. That's how he ends the poem.